The furthest potential inhabited planet is Kepler-1638b. It's in the constellation Cygnus, about 3,000 light-years away from us. It belongs to the super-Earth class, it's twice as wide and four times as heavy as our home planet. The gravity on it will feel much stronger. Even a normal jump will be much harder for you than on Earth. Although, if this planet is really inhabited, local life is used to such conditions. LHS 1140b This planet is very rocky and solid. Although its size is only 40% larger than the Earth, it's seven times as massive. It has a strong gravity of 3.25 g's. For comparison, when you take off on an airplane, you experience an overload of about 1.5 g's. So on this planet, you'd barely be able to stand on your feet. Because of its large mass, this planet has a thicker atmosphere. And because of the greenhouse effect, its temperature can be above 19 degrees Fahrenheit. And it rotates around its star quite quickly. It makes a full circle in just 24 days. And now, let's look at the constellation Aquarius. Here's an ultra-cold dwarf, Trappist-1. A small planet orbits in its habitable zone. It's three times lighter than the Earth. Its temperature is similar to ours, but the gravity is half as weak. But we would still feel comfortable there. Remember the people that went to the moon? There, the gravity is only 16% of the Earth's. That's what makes the astronauts move so funny. Kepler-452b is in a system that resembles the older sister of ours. The host star is only 11% older than our Sun and is almost 2 billion years older. The exoplanet itself is 6.5 billion years old, compared to 4.5 billion of Earth's. But these sisters are very far from each other. If you travel at the speed of the New Horizons spacecraft, it will take about 26 million years to get there. So bring a big lunch. This is the closest exoplanet to us, Proxima Centauri b. It orbits the red dwarf Proxima Centauri, which is the closest star to the Sun. This planet is just 4.2 light years away from us. The weird thing about Fomalhaut b isn't its name but the fact that it doesn't exist. It was first photographed back in 2008 and was a sensation. Scientists believe it to be a massive exoplanet, but it turned out to have low mass and it's falling to pieces of dust at the moment. It acts like a massive dust cloud. Gliese 1214b is quite extraordinary with its steamy environment. Wait, but steam is the result of water evaporation, isn't it? In fact, this hot planet is full of water-like substances. It's definitely hotter than our planet, with its 250 to 540 degrees Fahrenheit. It can also be an ocean planet. Still, very little is known about it since it was first discovered only back in 2009. If you ever wondered what it's like to walk on ice and hot coals at the same time, meet Gliese 436b. Being extremely close to its sun, the Neptune-sized exoplanet boasts temperatures hotter than a blazing oven. And yet, it's covered in ice, which burns incessantly. This ice is much denser due to the enormous gravity of the planet, staying solid even under extreme conditions and not melting away. But Gliese seems a nice place with quite mild climate compared to an oven like Kuro 7b. Its day-to-day -day temperature is over 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Combined with the rocky surface, it presents a kind of underworld landscape. The rocks on the ground bubble and boil, evaporating in the atmosphere, where they cool down and eventually fall back on the surface in a brimstone rain. The saddest thing about Kuro 7b is that it might have once been a gas giant whose atmosphere melted away from the heat, leaving only the scorched core. Kuro XO 3b is neither as hot as the previous one, nor as cold as many other planets. It's a gas giant similar in size to Jupiter, yet 20 times denser. It makes this exoplanet's gravity weigh down on everything on its surface 50 times more than it would on Earth. Stepping on it would be your ultimate doom, because you'd be immediately crushed by the density of its atmosphere. Tress 2b is a planet where night never ends. 
and it's not your regular night with stars shining in the beautiful skies. Here, it's pitch dark and scorching hot. Tress 2b is a gas giant, roughly 1.5 times more massive than Jupiter, and its surface absorbs light better than charcoal. It might also have a faint dark red glow because of its burning air, which is as hot as fresh lava. It may mistakenly seem that Saturn does have an Earthen-friendly environment. Some layers of this giant gas sphere actually have quite nice temperature conditions. If you dive into Saturn, you'll get to a layer with liquid molecules with 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which seems like Earth. Anyway, it's only one minor layer, and the rest of the planet is freezing cold. So you'll never be able to land on Saturn and be the same human being like you are on Earth. But you can become a sort of snowball there, or an ice crystal. As for Jupiter, you might have already guessed that there's no solid land. This planet is made of hydrogen and helium, so it's another gas sphere you can't walk on. It's a bit different from Saturn, though. You wouldn't dive in Jupiter, you'd rather float on it. This planet is like a giant cloud, and if you ever landed on it, it would be like walking through a super thick fog. The temperatures fluctuate a lot here. It's freezing on the surface. Unlike Saturn, the deeper you dive, the more scorching this gas sphere gets. Oxygen is usually viewed as an element that might bring life to a planet, but this is definitely not the case for Osiris. Scientists were shocked to find oxygen on this planet, or rather around it, because it's eight times closer to its star than Mercury is to the Sun. This extreme distance makes Osiris a living melting pot where anything that could burn will. It's also responsible for a very short orbit of the planet around its star. A year on Osiris is just 3.5 days on Earth. To boot, the atmosphere of the planet is constantly blown and melted away by the heat from its sun. Grab your calendar and put a reminder on these months. You can choose from April, August, October, November, and December. Some months even have two showers instead of only one, like October and November. Choose the month and day that works for you. Just check your calendar again. If you don't mind it being a bit chilly, just wrap yourself up in a blanket and hop in the back of your pickup truck. Then, all you have to do is stare up and enjoy the sky all night long, waiting for the shower to happen. Or, if you like to work by the clock, set up an alarm to wake you up in the middle of the night. That works too. Mercury's coming right at you! Watch out! Nah, don't fret. It's still right up there. Just a bit closer than usual. That's because on the 17th of May, it'll be at its greatest eastern elongation. What this means is, it will be easier to observe. Right after sunset, point your eyes to the skies in the west and try to look for the planet. This happens again during the 4th of July, but this time you'll have to look to the east. You might need a compass. Start your celebrations early in the morning, just before the sun rises, with a gorgeous view of Mercury, and of course a cup of coffee in your hand. If you still don't catch it then, try September 14th or October 25th. How about when the moon loses its natural white color? This happens just a few days after Mercury's first performance on May 26th. It's called a total lunar eclipse. The moon will get gradually darker, as if someone was dropping dark red paint on it, until it finally reaches this sort of rusty red color that you can see on the screen. Not all of us will be able to see this, unless you're on a cruise in the Pacific Ocean or in the calm fields of Eastern Asia. If you live next to the Tokyo Tower, you're in luck. It'll be visible throughout the whole of Japan, and if you happen to live in the western part of North America, you'll also be able to see the moon shapeshift. Well, not quite shapeshift. It's not going to turn into a wolf or anything. That only happens if you're a werewolf, which I definitely am not. So it's more like a color shift. Still on the moon, picture a massive black hole. Well, this next astronomical event kind of resembles that. On June 10th, during the annular solar eclipse, the moon will be the furthest it ever gets from Earth. While it's doing this, it ends up covering most of the sun, leaving just a bit of its curvature for us to see. 
If you happen to look at the sky during this time, what you'll see is a massive ring of light. Chances are you won't be able to tell that's the moon out there, since it'll be the same color as deep space, the absence of color, or just a very deep black. Oh, and that ring you're seeing? That's the sunlight. Astronomers know for sure that the universe is growing bigger, and the speed at which it's ballooning is increasing all the time. But if the whole thing is swelling into something bigger, then it must have some kind of an edge, right? It's unlikely that people will ever find out, but if so, then what would it be? A ginormous brick wall and then nothing? An abyss that leads to nowhere? The most common theory is that the universe is shaped in such a way that it can't have an edge. But it's not the only idea. Another theory is even more difficult to comprehend. The universe is indeed infinite. And our part of it isn't that unique. It means that somewhere out there, there's another you. Or rather, other you. One of them is just a bit shorter, another wears their hair in different ways, and a third one is identical to you in all possible ways. Hey, good looking! Oh yeah, there's also a theory about a multi-universe that consists of many smaller universes. And the universe we live in is just a tiny bubble among other similar bubbles. Those scientists who support this idea are also sure that bubble universes can come into contact with one another. Then gravity starts to flow between them, and when two or three universes connect, a big bang occurs, just like the one that created our home universe. Everything on Earth and everything people have managed to see in space with the help of telescopes and other instruments is normal matter. It's made up of atoms and molecules and adds up to less than 5% of the universe. Almost three quarters of the universe is dark energy. Astronomers wouldn't even know the thing existed if several decades ago they hadn't found out that the expansion of the universe wasn't slowing down. Quite the opposite, it was accelerating. It meant there had to be some enigmatic force that counteracted gravity. It got dubbed dark energy. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want proof? 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. The Sun's atmosphere is hotter than the surface of the star. The surface temperature reaches 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but the upper atmosphere heats up to millions of degrees. Venus is a champ when it comes to volcanoes. The planet has about 1,600 major ones, but none of them is known to erupt. The ocean on Jupiter is larger than any other in the solar system. But unlike Earth's oceans, it's made not of water, but of metallic hydrogen. The ocean's depth is a mind-blowing 25,000 miles that's almost the same as the distance around Earth. With an average diameter of 2,160 miles, the Moon is the fifth largest satellite in the solar system after Jupiter's satellites Ganymede, Callisto, and Io, and Saturn's Titan. There's a supermassive black hole 250 million light years away from us. It hums the deepest sound ever detected from any object in the universe. It's 57 octaves lower than the middle C on your piano. That's one quadrillion, which is one with 15 zeros, times deeper than what we can hear. The Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy are going to meet in 3.75 billion years. They're moving towards each other at a breakneck speed. When the two galaxies collide, they'll form a huge elliptical galaxy. I won't be around then. Mercury is a few billion years old. In 2016, scientists discover some abnormalities on the planet's surface, showing that it's getting smaller. After more research, they found out that Mercury hadn't finished cooling down yet. Astronauts in space can lose about 1% of their muscle mass each month. To prevent this, they have to stick to an exercise regimen that lasts two hours every single day. A star the size of our sun can shine for about 10 billion years. Specifically, our lovely sun is about 4.5 billion years old, 
and has already burned half its fuel. The next stage in a star's life comes when it runs out of juice. Internal pressure drops, but gravity continues to press. At some point, a star simply collapses under its own weight and shrinks to the size of its core at the speed of almost a quarter of the speed of light. In less than half a second, a huge star turns into a small and dense object. This rapid collapse creates incredible shock waves that cause the upper layers of the star to explode. Now, an incredible amount of energy and matter is thrown into outer space. At this moment, luminosity of the star increases millions or even billions of times. This is the flash that our scientists can see with super powerful telescopes. But the light from this explosion doesn't reach our planet until many years later. So in fact, this star has long since faded. There are several options at this point. It all depends on the size of the star. If its mass is small, about the mass of our sun, then for several months, this flash will become brighter and brighter until it reaches its peak. Then the energy of the explosion will begin to dissipate, gradually fading and cooling down. A few years will pass and the temperature of the former star will match that of space and it will simply cease to exist. But the heavier the star, the more interesting the events will be. Heavy stars burn their fuel too quickly and have a much shorter lifespan. Stars weighing about eight masses of the sun can collapse into a rather unusual object, which is rarely found in the universe, a neutron star. This dull ball is only six to 12 miles wide and covered with a hard metal crust about half a mile thick. Neutron stars can weigh about two suns and have a strong gravity force. If you feel comfortable and in good shape on Earth, you wouldn't even be able to lift a needle or a match here. What's more, you would be pressed to the surface like a pancake and just unable to move. But there are stars dozens of times heavier than the sun. An explosion of such a supernova, which weighs at least 40 times more than the sun, gives birth to the most inexplicable and mysterious object in the universe, a black hole. At first, an incredibly bright explosion occurs. A shockwave spreads, carrying dust and matter of the former star around like a fog. And at the place of the explosion, only a small black disk is left. This black abyss is the heaviest object in the universe. It's so heavy that its gravity curves space-time around it. Yes, the closer you are to a black hole, the slower time will go for you. If you could get close enough to one of them, spend a couple of minutes in its orbit and return to Earth, you would simply not recognize your home. One minute near a black hole can be a month, a year, or a decade on Earth. This depends on how heavy the black hole is. But don't get too close. The force of its gravity is so strong that even light can't escape from it. Humanity also knows about the existence of supermassive black holes. They gradually build up their mass, feeding on different cosmic objects, just like a predator. Usually, such supermassive black holes lie in the centers of galaxies, and their gravity is so strong they can hold countless stars near them 